Good morning. It is Tuesday, March 24th, 2020 in Lincoln, Nebraska. It was chilly this morning when I went out to the car. Cloudy, not raining, but uh, it's a day and it's supposed to get up to 60. So woohoo! Praise God for that. Good morning, and I pray that you all are doing well. It's been so good and such a joy uh, to be able to be with you. Although I miss your faces, I miss getting to uh, have those interactions uh, with you uh, as we do on a relatively regular basis through Bible studies and church and all kinds of interactions as well. Today, uh, we, our sponsor for this morning is uh, from the Book of Psalms again, uh, Psalm 125. Uh, I want to talk to you today about mountains. But before we get into that, I, I've got two things for you. Uh, one is if you're a member of Trinity and would like to commune, uh, we will be offering that this Sunday, Monday, and Wednesday here at church. Uh, you can go either on Facebook or uh, it will be posted on our, our church's webpage as well, uh, Sign Up Genius, and uh, we're going to limit it to about nine uh, people to come in uh, to commune and uh, there'll be various time slots available for that so uh, please take advantage of that. Uh, number two, the, the second thing, and this is very important, I need your help. I really really need your help. This is for Trinity members and those who are not Trinity members but intend to watch the service for this coming Sunday. Uh, this coming Sunday is the fifth Sunday of the month and you know what that means. It means we have a hymn sing and so I need hymns. I don't necessarily want to know what they are. In fact, the more hymns you provide, the better, because there'll be a greater pool that I can turn over to my uh, musician, uh, to Candace, and uh, she will select from those, and we will have a good time with that as best we can with a recorded hymn sing service. So uh, if you wouldn't mind, after this video, just post comments. You don't have to say anything about the video, unless it really stinks, let me know. Uh, but uh, please uh, give me uh, hymn titles. You can give up to three. Uh, just put it in the comment uh, section and uh, you can give titles, you can give hymn numbers. It doesn't matter, whatever suits you. Uh, if it's not out of the Lutheran service book, please let me know uh, what book you're getting it out of so that we can compare that uh, number with the right thing. So uh, give us your hymns, give us your hymns. This is your opportunity. Maybe yours will get, get chosen, maybe it won't, but you can't win if you don't try. So uh, please uh, make sure to sign up for that. Uh, this coming Friday, great guest coming on. I'm gonna do my first ever interview. Well, maybe not an interview, maybe a conversation. So I've got a special guest lined up for us on Friday. So make sure to stay tuned in. God's blessings to you. Now let me get to our sponsor for today, Psalm 125, uh, just the first two verses. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion. Remember, this is a psalm of the ascents. We talked about that yesterday, uh, going to Jerusalem, ascending to the temple, going to where God promises to be with his people. Uh, Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abides forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people from this time forth and forevermore. Oh, the confidence that mountains can bring. Although, uh, having seen many mountains, they can also diminish your confidence as well. In this text, of course, it's pointing to uh, God being that enfolding, enclosing, almighty, all magnificent. Uh, being that surrounds his people, guards and protects them. Without a doubt, he does that for you and for me every day of our lives. This doesn't mean that bad things don't happen. Of course they do. We live in a sin-fallen world. Our own flesh is filled with sin. Uh, We struggle with it day in and day out. But yet God promises, as he promised to Joshua and the children of Israel, and he promises to you as well, never will I leave you, and never will I forsake you. So I spent some time living out in Montana. My folks still live there. My brother lives in Idaho, and so uh, they are surrounded by mountains. I love the flat land, and so I live in Nebraska. Gotta love Nebraska and its flat lands. But the mountains are beautiful. I don't mind visiting them. Occasionally, I don't mind hiking them. I hate driving up them. I just don't like what it does to my engine and the like. Uh, but they're magnificent, they're beautiful. And a number of years ago, uh, 1989 in fact it was, my family was able to travel out to uh, Seattle, Washington, to Tacoma, Washington, to see family out there. And uh, part of our trip, we went to go see Mount St. Helens. If you've never been there and the Lord gives you opportunity, that's another part of the world that I would really encourage you go. 
uh, go and see what is there. So uh, May 18th, 1980, at approximately 8 o'clock in the morning, a mountain, and I'm talking a, a beautiful big mountain surrounded by just lush forests and a, a beautiful uh, lake, a spirit lake, uh, were utterly devastated in an instant, in a moment, um, as that mountain blew and it gave way and the whole mountainside just collapsed into the water, displaced the water. Well, the thing on my desk for today is uh, a little bit of Mount St. Helens, of this mighty mountain uh, reduced to ash, to dust. Uh, this is some blowdown from a gift shop. I, I assume it's not from China. Maybe it is. No offense to China. I'm just, you know, uh, but I, I'm pretty sure this is legitimate stuff actually from uh, that area of the Cascades in, in Washington state. Uh, some ash, some dust, some blowdown, as it's called, uh, from that mountain, that mountain reduced to rubble. Uh, this kind of pushes me towards our, our, our gospel lesson, our New Testament lesson for this morning. Um, it's from um, the book of Luke, or from the Gospel of Luke. It's Jesus on his way to Golgotha, to another mountain, if you will. We call it Mount Calvary. Our Lord has been broken and battered. He's been whipped, scourged, crown of thorns, spit on, everything imaginable, uh, disgusting happening to him. He is carrying his cross it's not his cross, it's, it's my cross, it's, it's your cross. And even in those moments, our Lord has compassion and love for others. But he speaks some very daunting words to some people who are weeping for him as he goes through those streets of Jerusalem. He shares these words with a group of women who are lamenting what's happening to him. He speaks these words, they're kind of foreboding, but, but let me just hang in there with me. We'll, we'll get to the promise that's, that's found in these words. Uh, from Luke uh, chapter 23, But turning to them, Jesus said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do these things when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? We are in the season of Lent. We know the frailty of humanity. We know, without a doubt, sorry, I thought my timer had run out of time, but I still got two minutes left. <laughs> we know the frailty of humanity. We know our own mortality. Jesus was going to that cross, to that Mount Calvary to suffer and to die, that same place where 2,000 years earlier, a dad was taking his son to go and sacrifice to God to show him how much he loved God more than his own son. But when it came down to it and Abraham had that knife raised to his son Isaac and ready to bring it down to bleed him out and to end his life, God said, no, 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 wait, stop, Abraham, Abraham. Yes, Lord, now I know you love me more than your son. I will provide for you. And it is on that mountain that Jesus was heading to, that same mountain that the people of, of Jerusalem were going to pray to fall on them when, when Jerusalem was to be destroyed in the most awful way by the Romans. God provided his son, and he provided him as a ransom for salvation for you and for me, for the entire world. Let us see the, the, the wickedness and the evil in our world. Let us see uh, the struggles that we are in the midst of. Yes, it's an opportunity to call them what they are, wicked and a result of sin, but they're also part of our Heavenly Father's discipline for us and for his children, that he utilizes it to draw us closer to him. Praise God for you and praise God for this day. Now go use that plus one second to proclaim his mighty deeds to you and to this world. Amen. <laughs>